rejoicing with Jesus. Be rejoicing with Jesus. Be rejoicing with Jesus. Yes, I'm now on my way. I'm rejoicing with Jesus. On my way back home to God. Welcome. And welcome you not only here in the sanctuary, but also those who are worshiping with us on the streaming video. You want to give God thanks for a warmer morning. Yesterday was below zero, I think, and to a nice warm 27 this morning. And so we can come and worship God in the beauty of holiness. We want to just ask those who are worshiping at home to remember to light their candles as a symbol of the presence of God in our midst, and since we are having communion today, if you are at home, you may get some juice and bread and brick and share at the time when we do share the elements here at North United Methodist Church in Hartford, Connecticut. I am Pastor Perrin, and our liturgist this morning is Sister Christine McCall. Bless the Lord. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Hear the good news. In this very instant, God has touched our hearts and offered God's healing and forgiving love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the call to worship. We are called to bring a new understanding of God, that God so loves the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us new life. We are the light of the world. We are called to follow the commandments and the law. The law of God. Come, let us be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Come, let us love one another with the love of God. Let us join together in the love of God and worship us Jesus. I don't know about you, but if it had not been for the Lord on my side, oh, I don't know where I would be. Our opening hymn today. If it had not been 
for the Lord on my side. Tell me, where, where would I be? mercy and love. Be with us this morning as we hear the stories of Jesus and his compassion. Remind us again that we also need to be people of hope and compassion in this world, which seems so dark. You, O oh God, open the doors of blessings. You reveal to us the many ways in which Jesus reached out to others at their time of need. Inspire our hearts and lift our spirits this day, for we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our response, his name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. 
righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but, do, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your regard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched 
places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a water garden like a spring of water whose waters never fail your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall raise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in this is the word of the lord be to god please stand for the reading of the gospel The gospel reading comes from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. Here begins verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled on the foot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, unless heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In preparation for the spoken word this morning, we sing the hymn 405, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Thank you. Please be seated. You are the 
the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled on the foot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. Matthew 5, 13 and 14. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. You are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, last Sunday, I gave a sort of story about a, a man, a very important man, who was stranded at the airport and who thought that because he was a, a VIP, because he was a very important person, he could just break the line and get what he wanted. But this VIP status didn't get him anywhere, didn't get him on the flight ahead of any other passengers waiting. He was not humble at all. But even if we are humble, we ought to know who we are. If you are humble, even if you are humble, we ought to know who we are. I don't know if your parents were like my parents, but as we were growing up, we had to walk circumspect. <laughs> we had to walk circumspect. We could not misbehave on the streets. Everyone, rich or poor, had a family name. And we could not let the family down. Every parent made sure that the children knew who they were. We just had to behave or else. And you and I would understand what or else meant, right? We just had to know who we were and whose we were. Bring no shame on this family. Don't shame the name. This morning, we are still on that hill with Jesus. Although Matthew's gospel, Matthew the gospel writer, wanted to portray Jesus as a new Moses, bringing a new charter for a new age, those eight beatitudes that Jesus has given us, blessed are, are not commands or commandments as Moses gave from his mountain, but they are statements of reality. They are indicators of what life in the kingdom of God looks like and how, as citizens, we are expected to behave. Just as a reminder, here are the Beatitudes from the easy-to-read version translation. Great blessings belong to, blessed are, great blessings belong to those who know they are spiritually in need. Those who are sad now. Those who are humble. Those who want to do right more than anything else. Those who show mercy. Those whose thoughts are pure. Those who work to bring peace. Those who suffer persecution. These are the qualities of those who are a part of the kingdom. These are the qualities of citizens of the new empire of God. So, so look now uh, at where Jesus is going to move this whole thing. He, the next thing that follows, after he gives them those beatitudes, you know, he, he, you remember that he is talking to the disciples. Remember that he has already called and chosen those disciples, and they are students of Jesus. They've just started out, and as students, they have not yet reached the level or the standard of Rabbi Jesus. But this is what Jesus says to them. You are the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled on the foot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. You are. That's what he said. You are. He's not saying that one day when you become perfect, 
you will be salt or you will be light. No, from the moment they said yes to Jesus, from the moment they left their nets, from the moment they left their father on his boat, from the moment they came in without being forced, from the moment they came without hesitation, this is who they were. From the moment you and I are baptized and confirmed into the Christian faith, this is who we are. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. From the moment I was born, Perrin, I didn't have to become a Perrin after that. That's who I was. That's who I am. My children, my grandchildren after, they are all bearing the same name. That's who we are. You are the salt of the earth. When we think of salt and its usage, we begin to see how vital we are to the life of this earth. What's salt used for? Oh, many, many things. Of course, you know that. Salt is used for many things. So we are vital to life on this earth. The first thing that comes to mind, of course, is that we use it to give flavor. You know, the taste that would otherwise have been bland. We go to a restaurant, and even before we taste the food, we take up the salt shaker, and we start to shake it on the food. We don't know how salt it is yet, you know, but we are taking all the salt on it because we like salt, don't we? Why do we like salt so much? We just like salt, don't we? Well, the American Heart Association has declared that 90% of us overconsume salt. 90%. The surprise is that most of the sodium we eat does not come from the salt shaker on the table. Most of the sodium we consume comes from processed and packaged food. 70% of our sodium intake from processed food. On average, we consume 3,400 milligrams a day. 3,400 milligrams. And the maximum amount of salt should be 2,400, 2,400. So we are eating 1,000 more milligrams per day than we should. Am I right? So when I started to examine my salt intake, you know, I used to be about 225 so pounds, and I was told by the doctor I better lose some. So I am about 199 now, thank God. <laughs> but I need to go back to where I was when I was 19 years old. <laughs> And so I, I began reading the labels on these things, you know, to see how much salt was in it. I was shocked one day when I saw that one bulla cake had 750 milligrams. One. 750 milligrams. So if I had three and a half bulla cakes, I shouldn't eat anything else for the day that had salt in it. <laughs> I had enough. My full quarter of salt was already taken up. Uh, ideally, we should stay under 1,500 milligrams a day. Under. Only two bullets. And nothing else with salt. I'm still trying to stay, you know, under that. <laughs> I'm trying to find a restaurant that doesn't over-salt the food. I don't know if you have found that, but if you found one, just let me know. Because I just don't know why they put so much salt in the food. <laughs> I am still tempted by salt mackerel. And run down, you know. <laughs> Corn, pork, and green banana. <laughs> so I have to say, shh. Because for the next 21 days, I can't even think about those things because we're starting the Daniel fast, right? So we can't think about those things. Am I right? Nothing like that. But I'm mentioning this salt stuff, you know, it's not mackerel and corn pork, because in the days before refrigeration, that is how meat was preserved. They corned the meat, it, you know, corn, corn fish and so on, corn pork, corn beef. They did that to preserve the food for weeks and months, even years from spoiling. So then, 
what we've heard, we heard that salt was used to flavor the food, to make it more tasty, and salt was used to preserve the meat, prevent it from spoiling. The salt had its usage. Today, we add many more usage, such as bleaching clothes. Salt is used to bleach clothes, unclog drains, and believe it or not, to generate electricity. Salt. Now, we probably wonder where all the salt comes from. Well, in the time of Jesus, what, what, what we call the Dead Sea is also known as the Salt Sea. And the river Jordan flows all the way down from the north, coming all the way down. It's why it's called Jordan. It flows down. It's going down to the Dead Sea. And the water that goes into the Dead Sea does not flow out and go anywhere else. The sea hardly have any life in it, you know. So the Dead Sea or the Salt Sea is a salt lake. And that is where salt came from in the time of Jesus, and it still does today. The Dead Sea is 10 times as salty as the Atlantic or the Pacific Oceans. One of the uses of its salt was to fertilize the ground. So salt was a fertilizer. Salt is still a fertilizer. If you hear about caustic potassium, potassium hydroxide, KOH for the scientists, that is a salt. Is used as a fertilizer among many other things. So when Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, most of his hearers would first think about fertilizer, fertilizing properties of salt, because they would see that every day. Farmers would keep on salting the earth to make sure the crops are growing, crops are healthy. Now that's the point at which I want to turn my sermon this morning, the growing idea. Salt is used to prepare the fertilize the soil so that plants may grow and grow healthy. So the question really is what are we helping to grow? We are the salt. What are we fertilizing? What are we causing to grow and to keep healthy and stronger? Whom have we helped to grow? And what did we do? Whom are we helping to grow today and what are we doing? When Jesus used the word earth, he was not thinking of the globe or the world around thing that we think about. In fact, in the first century when Jesus lived, the idea of a round earth or a globe did not exist. Earth, in the sense that Jesus used the word, meant the ground or the dirt. That's little... That's less, less glamorous, isn't it? You are the salt of the ground. You are the salt of the dirt. Well, that is exactly what it is. Know who you are and what you are. And since we are used to salt the ground, whenever we are no longer doing our job, people will walk on us, trample on us, and it will not even matter because we are no longer doing our job. We have lost our effectiveness. We have lost our use and are just being trampled on the foot. Nothing is growing where we are. No one is growing around us. You see, the idea that Jesus is trying to give the disciples was that we are not put into the soil to be the center of attraction. But just to cause things to grow, to cause people to grow. Know who you are. You are the salt of the ground, of the dirt. You are a growth agent. Now, by, by the time the, 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 the disciples and the people around are, are trying to wrap their minds around what Jesus was saying to them, he comes at them again. You are the light of the world. Oh yeah, so they, 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 they got the salt lesson and no, he doesn't rest, he gives them another, you are the light of the world. You see, a light does not draw attention to itself. Even if that light is the most expensive chandelier, a light shines in order to show others the way, not to draw attention to itself. A light shines so that others will not stumble. 
A light shines to show others the way. A light shines to bring clarity and focus. When I turn this off, I can't see as well as when I turn it on. Know who you are. You are the light for the world. And we must shine as if we are the only one. Light up the corner where you are. Today is a good day to highlight our Sunday school teachers, or our day school teachers, our coaches, our mentors, our social workers, people who are lighting up the corner, who are making people grow and become better. And in this month in which we celebrate black history and the progress of our people from slavery to the White House, we lift up those who were sought who provided growth for us, and those who were light, and who, those who showed us the way. And while we are at it, we should go down to Florida, you know, and talk to a man named Governor DeSantis. He needs some lessons. <laughs> he needs some light. He is surely stumbling in the darkness. He's trying to wipe out what little of our history is already in the textbooks. He's trying to wipe it out. He says it causes division. I think you should laugh at him. The scientist, this division was here long before we got here, you know. Long before you and I were born. And we need to point out to the scientists and to others who don't seem to know, or who are choosing to remain in the dark, that we are the light of the world. Our teachers, our coaches, our mentors, civil rights leaders are people who cause us to grow. Some are passed on, but those who remain, we should still encourage them. And let us come a little nearer home. For a few weeks now, we have been asking for teachers for the Sunday school here at North. So the more teachers we have, the more children we can recruit. What's the use getting a hundred children in here when you only have two teachers? Jesus did not ask the disciples for their qualifications before he recruited them. He just said, follow me, and I will teach you how. And he's saying the same to us today. Come and follow me, and I will enable you to be more effective. I, you are already sold. You are already sold. I will make you more potent. You are already light, i let you shine brighter. Just follow me. Follow me. And you will see how your nature will even change. If you are a warmonger or a gossip spreader, I will make you a peacemaker. If you are haughty and pompous, I will make you humble. If you think that you are more righteous than anybody else, I will make you poor in spirit. You will know your need of me. If what we say with our mouth is not really what is in our heart, I will give your heart a cathartic pill so that you'll become a sincere person. Now, a cathartic pill. You ever heard about that? My mother used to give me a cathartic pill at the end of every school term. At the beginning of every school term. You call it a washout. And boy, was I clean when it was finished. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so if I use Jesus' tongue, when he, Jesus was speaking in tongues, he said, Makari oi, oi kateroi, take care Makari oi, oi kateroi. You hear the word cathartic? Kateroi. Take care You hear the word cardia? Heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. Clean. In heart. Oh, he said, you have no idea what happiness awaits you. You will see God. Great blessings belong to you. You are salt. You are light. Know who you are. Don't become useless. People need you to be able to grow. Don't hide your light. People need you to show the way. 
What is Jesus saying to you this morning? You heard him. I heard him. You are salt. You are light. That's what he's saying. You are salt. You are light. The question is, what are you going to do about it? You are salt. You are light. What are you going to do about it? I invite you to come to the altar during the singing of this little light of mine. Know who you are. Speak with Jesus. Let him speak with you. And as you come, I'll come down and I'll pray with you. I pray for you. This little light of mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, please stand. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, everywhere I go, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine Everywhere! Everywhere I go, God bless you, Father. All the best to you, and God let the light shine. May God continue to give you health and.
come to the time for our offering. We have already offered ourselves to God. There are three ways to give offerings to this church. To pay our tithes to God. You can see them on our website if you are on the electronic board. Just follow the instructions and you can do that there. And I um, just want to remind you who is in charge of the website? I tried to give some money on Saturday, and it kept saying I must try again later. So we have to fix that. They don't want people to try to give money, and they tell them not to give it right now. <laughs> but uh, that, that's something that is technical. But I just wanted to thank those who do give your offerings in, on the you know, website to the banks and so on, and um, we encourage more of you to do that. And uh, you can also drop them in the plate as you come forward. But at this particular time, we're going to ask that we just have the prayer, bless the offering, and you keep it with you, and when you come for the communion element, then you pop up in the plate. That will make things pitiful a little bit. So let us pray. God of all creation, source of every blessing, you have given us so much. As we bring our tithes and gifts to you today, these seem so small by comparison unless we see that we are truly called to give ourselves back to the world, to be light, to be salt. May we be salt that brings value and flavor into relationships with those around us. May we be the light that helps others to find their way to your love and care. We pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus who came to help us to see all we could be. Amen. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us sing that. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures ever below. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise him above the heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now we enter into the Lord's Supper. The invitation is now issued to you. Come. Come to the Lord's table. All who love him. Come to the Lord's table. Confess your sin. Come to the Lord's table and be at peace. We have not believed you or trusted in your power. Lord, help our unbelief. We have stained our souls by our action and inaction. Cleanse, Cleanse us, Lord. Lord. We are broken by disease, bruised by the sins of others, weakened and unable to repair ourselves. Heal us, Lord. We ignore your call to center our lives in you, and so are deaf to the hopes and cries of the poor, the sick, the needy, and the earth. Ground us, Lord. 
When we confess our sinful ways, God abundantly pardons. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build up our common life. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also with you. Normally we'll be walking around and shaking hands and embracing each other, but now just stay in your seats and look towards the neighbors and offer them the peace. Peace. Namaste. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give praise to you, Lord. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Holy Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is praised among all peoples. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with your people on earth and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. You are holy, almighty one. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ. In the power of the Spirit, you created all things, blessed them, and called them good. You called to yourself a people to make your mercy and truth known in all the world. We betrayed your calling. You were faithful. We wandered from the way. You called us to return. Let us. And still we re returned from your ways, abused your creatures, and made ourselves slaves to sin and death. At the right time, you came and dwelt among us as one of us, bringing good news to the poor, healing the sick, raising the dead, sharing table with the unrighteous, and teaching the way that leads to life. By your incarnation, life, suffering, execution, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery, and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. On the night of your betrayal, Lord Jesus, you took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to your disciples, and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out is the new covenant in my blood. Blessed Trinity, in remembrance of all you have done to save us, we offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has come among us. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ abides with us. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on these gifts. Pour out your spirit on these gifts. Make these gifts the body and blood of Christ. Make us through them Christ's body alive in the world. Abba, Father, let your kingdom come. Glory to you. Glory to you. Come, Lord Jesus. Be our daily bread. Glory to you. Glory to you. Holy Spirit. Send us to the world. Glory to you. Glory to you. Holy Blessed Trinity. One God forever. Glory to you. The bread which we break, a symbol of the body of Christ, the cup of blessing which we bless, symbol of the blood of Christ. Go near with faith 
and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. So as you come, oh, I think we're You already have the cups, right? Okay. Uh, you don't have them? Uh, they're down there? Oh, I would have to give them out from the front. Christ died, and we feed on him with our hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed, drink and be truly thankful.
let us say the prayer together, beginning, Lord. Lord, you have Lord, now set, set your servants, servants free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of ours have seen, seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world, the world to see. Blessing and honor and, honor and glory are yours, are yours now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Before we lift every voice and sing, number 519. Three and one. Go with you now and always. Amen. Amen. 